parts of the state, for, for us, it was two straight days of, of, of no power at all. And so it, it seems to have varied geographically, region by region. Uh, I think there's going to have to be a serious inquiry into why it was, what were the factors that led the grid not to be able to meet the, the energy needs of Texans. Um, I've seen some of the early debates back and forth. I've seen some of the reporting that uh, a number of wind turbines froze in, in the low temperature environment. Texas is the number one producer of wind and energy in the country. Uh, about 25% of our electricity comes from wind, and so that was a factor. Uh, there were other electricity sources that also had significant weather-related problems, both natural gas and coal. And, and so I think we need to have a, a careful investigation, not in the, the passion of, of the moment when, when people's emotions are, are high, but, but a careful, serious, fact-based examination about what factors led to the grid being vulnerable. The, the grid is something that is designed, it is maintained, it is operated, it is regulated at the state level. So that is not, uh, not a federal government operation, but ERCOT uh, has produced real success in having low-cost energy here in the state of Texas. And most days out of the year, Texans are greater to have lower electricity bills than many other parts of the country. But at the same time, I think a lot of Texans are asking, well, why wasn't it there when we needed it? And we need to have a serious and careful examination of that based on the facts. Should those officials be, should those officials be fired? Well, it, it depends what decisions there was made. There needs to be a serious examination of what factors led to the grid not being able to sustain the needs and, and, and failing massively. And, and, and that's something that, that I don't want to I don't want to jump the gun and make assumptions about those uh, those decisions. You know, one of the things we're seeing online is, for example, this being a, a battlefront in in the the wars over alternative energy or fossil fuels and back and forth and both sides blaming the other. Um, Look, I think we should be driven by the facts, and, and I don't know. I've seen some of the early reporting. It seems there was a significant number of wind turbines that froze. My understanding is that there are, are wind turbines that are used in other environments that are colder that, that don't freeze, and so uh, these turbines could have been treated in a way to prepare them for the cold weather. That being said, in most parts of Texas, they're in cold weather very often, and, and so that's an examination that needs to to be made and an examination needs to be made of, of the other bases, uh, the other sources of energy in the state and where where the lack of power generation came from and what is, uh, what's the best way to respond to that and, and provide to that lack of power generation. Senator Morgan, what do you say to the people who saw you leave the state of Texas during this period? Well, what I, what I would say is I was taking care of my family the same way Texans all across the state were taking care of, uh, of my family. And, and it, it certainly was not my intention for that to be understood as, as critics have tried to paint it as, as somehow diminishing uh, the, 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 the suffering and hardship other Texans had experienced. I, look, Texans want this problem solved. I want this problem solved. I want the power on. We've, we've got... Most of the, the homes that had lost power have gotten power back. That's a good first step. We still have uh, water supply is still questionable in a lot of places, and that's frustrating. Having boil notices, that's frustrating too. We, we need to, the first thing we need to do is correct the immediate problem. And then the second thing we need to do is engage in the longer term examination. As I said, that the, the operation and regulation of that is at, at the state level and not the federal level. But I think those questions, Texans want answers. And, and I'm glad the governor is calling for the legislature to investigate that because I think that that is an investigation that needs to happen. Last question. Go, go. Senator Cruz, Senator Cruz, did you, a lot of people are calling your decision to vote against the Texas time. Do you have any thoughts on that? Did you come back because you felt guilty or did you come back because you got caught? So, so the question from the video on the cell phone was, was whether the decision uh, to go was tone deaf. Look, it, it was obviously a mistake. And in hindsight, I, I wouldn't have done it. Um, I was trying to be a dad. And, and all of us have made decisions 
when you've got two girls who have been cold for two, two days and haven't had heater power and they're saying, hey, look, we don't have school. Why don't we go? Let's get out of here. I, I think there are a lot of parents that'd be like, all right, let me, if I can do this, great. That's what I wanted to do. Um, as I said, really, from the moment I sat on the plane, I, I, I began really second guessing that decision and saying, look, I, I know why we're doing this, but but I've also got responsibilities. And, and, and it had been my intention uh, to be able to, to work remotely, to be on the phone, to be on internet, to be on Zoom, to be engaged. But I needed to be here, and, and, and that's why I came back. And then as it became a bigger and bigger firestorm, uh, it became all the more compelling uh, that I needed to come back because our priority should be fixing this problem and making sure it doesn't happen again. And, and I didn't want all the screaming and yelling uh, about this trip to distract even one moment from the real issues that I think Texans care about, which is, which is keeping all of our families safe. Okay, thank you all. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And stay warm. Do you guys have power yet? Very old.